Hello, good afternoon. It's Adil Fazal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review of the US markets from an intermarket analysis perspective, as always. Please be sure to visit tradesignaler.com. A signal is a market update from leading providers. You can download the app via the Google Play and the Apple App Store. Today is Friday, the 3rd of June 2016. And we are now looking forward, or not looking forward, should I say, or now uh, attempting to react to the NFP data. Now, everything certainly seems to be um, focused on the NFP. There certainly seems to be a, a lot of um, either uh, sitting back and allowing the markets to dictate before they react, and hence the reason why we're seeing this short squeeze in the markets, especially US. This will be a US market perspective uh, report. This is for the S&P, the Dow, the NASDAQ. And let's try and decipher exactly what's happening here. Let's start off with the US dollar. Okay. So going into the NFP, the uh, reports, uh, jobs data yesterday was certainly uh, stellar. Not so, well, I wouldn't say stellar, but basically indicated that you were going to get a stronger jobs report. Uh, and again, uh, uh, the hawkish rhetoric certainly has been on the increase with potential for two rate hikes today. Talk from Mr. If I can recollect correctly, Mr. Evans, yes, these two rate hikes by end of 2016. So they obviously have access to the data and the data is certainly going to come in line, which will support their hawkish argument. A hawkish number obviously is negative for stocks or negative for equities, certainly negative for commodities, especially with the oil price obviously now into, uh, well, stuck at the $49 level. And you can certainly see that the US dollar index certainly looking to potentially push higher than test this 200 MA. And as we all know, a stronger dollar certainly hurts uh, the commodities market and certainly can hurt equities as well with the borrowing costs certainly increasing. OK, right. In terms of economic data this morning, let's just quickly go over the European session. The Asian session overnight was certainly positive, 0.4 percent and 0.4 percent in Nikkei and the Shanghai and the Hang Seng. So. Nothing spectacular, but more or less a, a break-even type day. And really everything is focused on the uh, the actual uh, NFP report. Okay, now in terms of economic data around the Eurozone this morning, uh, Chinese data have certainly weaker than expected overnight. CACs in China services. Italian weaker than expected. French weaker than expected PMIs. German PMI certainly came in in line and uh, potentially weaker than expected. Services in line and composite uh, PMI certainly came in lower. The uh, EU PMI certainly came in slightly uh, stronger, although more or less in line. UK data certainly beat uh, comprehensively, and retail sales out of the Eurozone were, actually, uh, were absolutely dismal. So uh, a weaker Euro isn't exactly helping, and this QE concept of QE certainly it hasn't fed through to the market. Now, we're looking forward to uh, unemployment rate, average hourly earnings, um, uh, certainly in the NFP. And trade balance data out of the US, and you have market PMI, composite services, ISM, factory orders. Mr. Brainard is speaking as well, and then we have the US rig count. So, a barrage of economic data, and it's time to react. That's basically the uh, the situation that we are we are now. Now, I'll declare that my bias is currently already negative. I'm actually short the Nasdaq and the S and P 500 on the live analysis service, so my bias certainly is bearish. And if that f comes through into my analysis. Just declaring that in advance. Okay, so the US dollar certainly is set to uh, potentially move higher. Uh, the USDJPY really is indicating that to a large extent. You can see that the USDJPY certainly is carving out a potential inverted head and shoulders formation. Now, the USDJPY move lower has totally uh, uh, diverged from the uh, QE trade, uh, so to speak. Okay, so with this concept of USDJPY down and obviously the stock market go, goes down or moves down and vice versa, certainly a, uh, a divorce there to a large extent because this sell-off in the USDJPY has not been accompanied with a sell-off in equities. It's actually been the reverse. So certainly an interesting uh, um, observation there, folks. So certainly keep an eye on that. That certainly is an, a very interesting observation. Now the uh, daily chart on the four hour or even a 60 minute basis, you can certainly see that we are now coming into support we've certainly hit a double bottom intraday already uh, the four hour chart as well you certainly have horizontal support allow me to just to elaborate certainly uh, horizontal support here and horizontal support here so you are looking for a potential short squeeze and a move higher so bear that in mind okay now bringing out the s p 500 let's just bring out this chart for you know the daily chart clearly shows you are into horizontal resistance at this 2104 
up to 2116 zone so very unlikely for us to certainly penetrate and push higher the 60 minute chart certainly has <coughs> broke out of previous resistance so again that's certainly something to observe you can see that we've broken out this 2100 level and the next level is 2110 now, from my understanding and my perspective, given the uh, uh, f fact that OPEC uh, failed to uh, reach an agreement, that in itself is net net negative. I have actually elaborated on the price of oil. Now, obviously, you have yen certainly appreciating on the back of uh, Mr. Arbe's delay in sales tax, actually being a net net negative uh, for the market. Now, let me just bring up the chart of oil for you and uh, give you a, a, a elaborate to you. The 60-minute chart, you can clearly see we're holding that 49.5 dollar resistance zone. The daily chart as well, you are seeing it uh, exhaustion, multiple doji candles, and the four hour chart clearly shows you a HNS formation. Now, uh, we need a catalyst, and the catalyst isn't there for oil now, especially with the fact that the dollar is obviously appreciating, getting stronger, which is a net net negative for oil, and etc. 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 Need, need I say more? Okay, now let's go back to the SP 500. Now, will the SP 500 break higher? Um, the question really is uh, based on the Wiltshire. Let me just bring up the Wiltshire for you. Let me just quickly bring up the Wiltshire. Let's bring up the, this is the uh, uh, the actual uh, Russell 3000, by the way. And the Russell 3000, even on the weekly chart, you can clearly see that we are now into resistance on the weekly chart as well on the Russell. The daily chart did actually penetrate yesterday. I and mean, you can certainly see a, uh, a penetration through the resistance zone. So again, that certainly needs to be respected. To a large extent so the russell certainly is leading the way but fundamentals are not confirming because you have a hike in the u.s uh, interest rate right okay so you have the daily chart you can see that we are now into this next resistance zone on the daily and therefore you are looking at resistance on the russell 2000 as well so bear that in mind now the weekly chart uh, again indicates resistance so from my perspective, you are into resistance on the Russell 3000 and the 2000, and therefore you're looking for a reversal in, in, in the markets as well. So that's my interpretation thus far, and that's why the S&P 500 will reverse too. Bringing up the VIX as well, let me just quickly give you an, uh, an insight on the VIX. I mean, looking at consumer staples and home builders, S&P retail. I mean, just bringing up individual sectors as well. Uh, the retail sector you certainly have a gap to fill up here and that certainly remains a, a level of resistance so certainly a, a potential push one could argue you are looking for in the interim on the retail sector uh, now copper itself has been very bullish today by the way 60 minute chart now coming into resistance though so therefore looking to move lower uh, let me just the chart of Russell 2000, Wiltshire 5000, that's the chart I'm after. Okay, so daily chart of Wiltshire, you can see that we are into resistance. A doji candle was, was put in yesterday. The weekly chart certainly seems to be exhausted as well with lower highs. A uh, 60 minute chart, bull flag failed to, to, to penetrate and follow through. So daily chart of Wiltshire 5000, which is a comprehensive uh, uh, understanding of the US market, certainly into resistance as well. So again, looking to potentially move lower now. Let's bring up the Dow Jones. If I go to the daily chart, the Dow Jones, you can see that we're back at that 17,800 level. We're back into that resistance zone. Let's bring up the chart of the Dow Transports. Okay, Dow Transportation Index certainly indicating weakness as well. The daily chart at the moment, again, is into horizontal resistance. So from my perspective, yes, you are looking at further weakness in U.S. markets based on that understanding let's bring up the nasdaq for you the nasdaq itself going to the daily chart the nasdaq you can see that we're into gap fill resistance alone that alone should indicate to you that you are looking for a potential reversal so bear that in mind and we could certainly connect this across here as well and you certainly are looking for potential resistance on the u.s markets too so again indicating resistance on the nasdaq itself with it being into gap fill resistance so another argument for a potential move lower Looking at the semiconductors, bringing up the daily chart, the semicons, again, you are into resistance, a gap fill resistance on the semicons, horizontal resistance here and gap fill here. So cert certainly, again, another uh, 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 basically argument can be made that you are looking for resistance too, okay? Looking at the biotechs as well, let's bring up the biotechs for you. Here we go. Now, the biotechs certainly have had a very impressive uh, move higher based on the Allegan deal. And again, horizontal resistance. I mean, you certainly are coming into resistance on the uh, the biotechs as well. 
So from my perspective, US markets certainly have hit a roadblock and certainly indicating a move lower. Even with the USD JPY looking to move higher, even if we do get a stronger number itself, it will support the USD JPY to move higher, but equities, not so much, okay? You are looking for a potential flush. So again, interesting scenario thus far. Interesting, see how this market will react. Again, uh, will a stronger jobs number be uh, bullish for equities and send them higher, or has that already been factored in? And will it be mainly be a uh, sell the uh, buy the rumor, sell the news type event, with obviously fears of a rate hike coming down the road? And Mr. Evans has already reiterated that, and therefore you are looking at potential uh, weaker equities. Again, the markets will react, so we just have to adjust accordingly. Be sure to uh, follow CFDs.com for your trading needs. And certainly take advantage of that 25% account bonus uh, opening offer, okay? Goodbye now.